Welcome to this quick video on the new multiple input output support for applications in Spring Cloud Dataflow. I've got Dataflow running here with a selection of old and new applications registered. They may look the same, but you'll see the differences as we go through the demo. Now, traditionally, event processing in Dataflow has just involved building some linear pipeline. And the lines between the nodes show how that data is going to flow through the pipeline. So it's a very simple time pipe log case. And I want you to think about what this pipe means here in the DSL. It means implicitly buying me a connection between these two apps. And the underlying infrastructure knows exactly what to do because there is only one output, there's only one input. Of course, we know what to create a channel for. That will become important later when we get into this multi IO case. Now, Spring Cloud Streams has a functional style programming model, and if you couple that with stateful stream processing primitives from Kafka Streams, there's a new set of use cases we want to capture, where potentially applications are taking data from multiple upstream topics slash channels and publishing to multiple downstream topics. So how does that work in Dataflow now? So this is one of our new style sources. And it may look like a regular source, but in fact, it's given a name to its output channel. This is specified in the metadata. Uh, our time one had no name, so it was just some default output. And this represents a case stream of events representing users, how many clicks they take to complete something at your website. At the same time, we have a stream of data that might be where those people are in the world when they're connected to your website. And the first new, really new thing we'll see here is that we have a processor with multiple inputs. Again, they're named channels and they're specified in the metadata for this application. And we just need to connect them up. Now, what this might do is it does a map reduce over those two kinds of input data to compute how many clicks people are taking in different parts of the world to complete their transactions. Now, what you might immediately notice up here is the DSL looks way different. So, what's happened here is we've had to flip from this implicit channel binding to be more explicit. So we've foregone the use of single pipe and flipped over to double pipe. And I don't know if you remember previous versions of Dataflow. Double pipe meant here's a set of things to deploy, but please don't bind any channels between them. And that's what we're using it to mean here. So we've said here there are three apps to deploy. Please deploy them all. But don't do anything magically for me. And here you see we're being explicit about what channels are bound between them. So this is saying uh, using the familiar channel syntax that we've had from destinations or taps before. The user clicks channel for clicks per region, this one, should take its data from clicks ingest.user clicks, clicks ingest.user clicks. And similarly, the second channel is connected user regions to user regions from regions ingest. So we've been very explicit about the channel bindings. And then we have a sync that might simply log out this data for now. Or we may stick it into an, some destination uh, suitable for processing later. And you'll see that what's happened here is, yes, the fourth app has been deployed and we've been explicit about the channel bindings again. So although there is only a single link, it's using name channels on each end of the connection. So we're having to be explicit about those channel names. So this is just the beginnings of what is possible just show you something else you might start to get into. This is a, a play node. It's got five inputs and four outputs. Again, all specified in the metadata. Maybe I want to pre-process this region's ingest stuff before I send it to my application. Uh, maybe it needs to go through two rounds of processing. And it's perfectly possible to connect up multiple channels between these nodes. Maybe there's a a default output channel and an error channel that you want to connect. And then we might connect that output back around to this input. So this is how the new data flow manages to capture those kinds of use cases where there are multiple streams of data, potentially as inputs, as outputs, or even flowing between applications in your system. We can't wait to see what you do with it. Thanks for watching.